Welcome to Cultivate Joy. I'm Summer. And I'm Ethan. And together we're converting a school bus into a tiny home on wheels. We thrifted all of our kitchen cabinets, so our first task was to make them all level so we could install our countertops. I highly recommend thrifting cabinets because this little sliver of woodworking was much easier than the arduous task of building drawers by hand. Unfortunately, we chipped the corner of our first countertop, so our first cut was actually just to get rid of that. But our skills fell a little short, and we ended up having to accept that our corner was just going to have a chip in it. As a DIYer, sometimes you have to pick your battles. Our next section of countertop was going to be at the corner of our L shape, so there was some math involved in figuring out the angle that we had to create with our cut. Once both cuts were made, we went ahead with installing our kitchen sink. Finishing our plumbing is another matter, but being able to see our sink installed in our kitchen supplied a huge boost in morale and made our kitchen feel like a kitchen. Once we'd successfully accomplished the sink installation, we moved on to cutting the hole for our propane-powered cooktop. We've had the sink and cooktop combo picked out since before we bought our bus, so seeing them together on our countertop was a really great milestone for us. We did have to cut our drawers down a little bit to fit our cooktop in, but it was worth it. After we siliconed all the pieces and parts and secured our countertops to our cabinets using these corner braces, it was time to move on to tiling our backsplash. We found these white rectangular tiles at Habitat for Humanity, and they just happened to stack up to the perfect height for this area below our windows. They're also sold at Home Depot for pretty cheap, so we were able to pick up some replacements when we lost some to our primitive cutting methods. the windowsill and frames really brought the whole look together. We tried everything we could to get this to be flush. We realized they set us up for failure because this one is just thicker than the other one. What the heck, Home Depot? We really love this tiled backsplash and think it makes the space feel more like a real kitchen. So we highly recommend planning one in your own tiny build. The last frontier in this area was the space between our ceiling and our windows, and we decided to run a long strip of thin plywood here rather than bring the ceiling all the way down just to give the walls a little bit more height. It was so rewarding to finally see that ugly wire rope disappear, and this was the first place that we finished from floor to ceiling. Contending with our bus's curved roof to build this standalone wall between our kitchen and bathroom was a challenge, but it actually paled in comparison to the struggle we had when it came to creating our lovely kitchen shelf. All right, so here's our kitchen shelf. It's 12 feet long. And 
This is a project that we thought we were going to do last weekend, but we got pine board and I never realized how sucky pine board was at accepting stain. So that was a big disappointment. But here we have a white board, white wood board. So hopefully that works better. So for our second try, we used this pre-stain wood conditioner before our dark walnut stain. But unfortunately, the results were still disappointing. Oh god, it's bad. Just keep going. It's bad. What? Well, again, apparently we don't understand stain because that is just not dark walnut. Something's wrong with that. So. We're going to try something new. So this is dark walnut paint. We wanted to include this whole series of unfortunate attempts in our video just to show a small bit of all the challenges you have to deal with as inexperienced builders on a project this big. Delays, mistakes, and lessons are always setting you back, and it's hard to get through sometimes, but it's very normal anytime you're learning a bunch of new skills. So the paint didn't work out, and Ethan very graciously sanded the entire board down so that we could try to stain it again with a different brand. So it's been three or four weeks since we first started staining this board. So until we can figure out how to stain a board to match our floor, this is gonna be our kitchen board, and we're just gonna love and accept it for what it looks like, and we're gonna take lessons or something, I don't know. <laughs> To cover the top section of our wall, we started by creating a paper template in the exact shape of the space we needed to fill. Then we transferred the shape onto our tongue and groove pine boards already pieced together and cut along the lines with our jigsaw. We tried our best to match the curve of our cedar covered ceiling exactly, but we were most concerned about creating a smooth unbroken line where the wall and ceiling meet. Once the boards were painted, our kitchen was officially finished. We have been thrifting and collecting kitchen items for years now, and I've been dreaming about the day when we could unpack all of our finds. Our goal for the space is to have little to no plastic and make sustainable shopping and cooking easier, all while cultivating a put together yet cozy vibe. While we wanted a vintage feel and a lot of these finds are secondhand, many of them are still available so I'll be sure to link everything that I can below in the description. These were actually two separate Goodwill trips, but very serendipitous. I absolutely love this set. And then this was the same kind of pattern that my grandparents' dishes had on them at my grandma and grandpa's house, so that was a very cute find for me. We thrifted these glasses back in Ohio, and each one has a different bird on it. Kind of cabin vibes. So in my thrifting journey, I became a little bit obsessed with copper pots and pans and started collecting quite a few. And I was hoping that we could maybe hang them above our stove. 
but I'm not sure if we actually have the space for that, so we'll see. to pull this stuff off and we've reached the day. advantages of living in a tiny home is that you can be really intentional about every inch of your space and create an aesthetic unique to your vision. We've had some of these items picked out since before we even owned our school bus, so finally seeing all of these elements together in our kitchen was a real dream come true. Thank you guys so much for watching and for following along with us on this bus build journey and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.